Paul Jennings' Weirdest Stories, read by Auntie Rachel. And apparently there's cars going off in the background. Please excuse that. Everybody's having a fun Saturday night in lockdown, apparently. <clears throat> the story is called Tonsil-itis. Good grief, I'm gone. I've had it. That good looking girl from next door has been seeing me pulling hairs out of my nose. Ugh, she thinks I'm grotty. Now I have to tell the whole story because I can see by the look on her face that she's disgusted. I've already lost Tara, my girlfriend. Ooh, girlfriend. I couldn't stand if Jill got the wrong idea too. Listen, Jill, don't look like that. There's a very good reason why I do it. You don't think I'm pulling the hairs out of your no out of my nose, do you? It's very painful. Jill's not saying anything. She's just staring at me, so I go on with the story. This little garden gnome business is only here because of my nose hair pulling. You don't believe me? Well, look at this. I take my hand off the new garden gnome's head and show her the little eye that has grown on the end of my finger. I've never shown anybody this little eye before. I can see it, which is a fairly unusual thing. When I'm not making gnomes, I keep, keep a glove on so nobody else can see the eye. Jill's mouth is hanging open with surprise. So I decide to tell her about the way the whole thing happened before she thinks I've gone crazy. It all begins when my girlfriend Tara gives me a, a garden gnome for my 14th birthday. Oof, it's a horrible looking garden gnome and it's only got one eye. It's very lovely, I say to Tara. Just what I wanted. A little angry looking garden gnome. It is angry looking too. It's it's one and only eye glares as if everyone at everyone as if its toenails are being pulled out. And its mouth's wide open. <sighs> like somebody's someone's yelling out swear words at the footy. Ooh. It's made out of cement, but it's very realistic. I'm so glad you like it, said Tara in a dangerous voice, because it costs me a lot of money. Hmm. I can see that, I answer. Anyone can tell that's a very special garden gnome. I know just the spot for it, down behind the garden shed. Behind the garden shed, yells Tara. You can't put it out in the rain. I don't think you like it. I was only joking, I said quickly. I'll put it in the shelf where I can see it all the time. So that is how the garden gnome comes to be in my bedroom. Every morning and every night, there it is glaring at me. As the days go by, it seems to look grumpier and grumpier. After a while, I find that I can't sleep at night. The angry gnome gets into my dreams. I wake up at night and I find I can't stop staring at its horrible little face. I keep having a nightmare about being swallowed by it. <sighs> I turn the gnome around so it faces the wall. But this does not work either. I keep imagining that it's pulling faces. And finally, I can't stand it no more. I grab the gnome by its silly little red hat and I'm just about to smash it to smithereens when I notice something strange. Inside its mouth, right at the back, it's a tiny little face about half the size of a pea stuck on the gnome's tonsils. I think whatever made this garden gnome, whoever made this garden gnome has a strange sense of humour. I decide to remove the little face from the gnome's tonsils. I get a small hammer and a screwdriver and I start chipping away at the little face at the back of the gnome's throat. I feel a bit like a dentist. The gnome's mouth is wide open but I bet he would close it if he could. After a couple of hits, the little face flies off the gnome's tonsils and falls onto his tongue. The next bit's a bit hard to believe, but it really does happen. A little round face rolls along the garden gnome's concrete tongue onto its lips and thrice flies through the air and hits me full in the mouth. Ouch! I yell at the top of my voice. Not hurt. It's so 
so painful that my eyes start to water. I get really mad now. I start searching around on the carpet for the little round face. It's nowhere to be seen. I search and I search, but I can't find it anywhere. My lips are still hurting and I have a funny tickling feeling somewhere at the back of my throat. Right, I yell at the moon. You have had it. I pick up the screwdriver and I throw it as hard as I can. The point of the screwdriver hits the gnome no, no, on one and only eye and knocks, knocks it clean off its face. Now the gnome has no eyes at all. It's very lucky it's only made out of concrete. It would be a very unhappy gnome. Look around on the floor. Why? But I can't find it either. <sighs> this is when I notice that one of my fingers on my right hand is feeling sore. <sighs> okay, what happens next is really weird. I find myself looking at my own face, just as if I'm lying on the carpet. Looking up at myself. I'm looking down, I'm looking up at the same time. My head starts to swim. I feel I must be having a nightmare. I hope I'm having a nightmare because if not, I must be going nuts. There on one of my fingers is a little eye, a real eye. It's staring and blinking and, and I can see it. The gnome's eye has somehow grown onto my finger. With a scream of rage, yeah, and I, 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 grab my, I grab the gnome and I run outside with it. I throw it down onto the concrete path and I smash it to pieces with a hammer. By the time I'm finished, all that's left is a pile of dust and powder. The gnome's gone for good, but the eye is not. No, the eye is still there, blinking and winking on the end of my finger. I shove my hand in my pocket because I can't bear to look at that extra eye. Suddenly I can see what's in my pocket. There's a used tissue, two cents, which is all the money I have in the world, and half a such licorice block. The eye is looking around in my pocket. I grin. At first I think maybe this isn't so bad. An extra eye on the end of my finger might be quite useful. I go back into my bedroom and poke my finger around a little hole in the wall. There's a family of mice nesting in there. They get a big fright when they see the finger eye looking at them and they nick off as fast as they can go. Next, I stick my finger into my ear hole to see what's going on in there. My new eye seems to be able to see in the dark, but to be honest, it's not really very much action inside my ear. This is when I get the idea to have a peek inside my own mouth. I've always wondered what it's like at the back of my own throat, and this is a big chance to find out. I poke my finger in and I have a good look around. <laughs> it's quite inter interesting, really. I've never seen behind that thing that dangles down at the back before. There's a lot of red, wet mountains back there. Suddenly, I see something terrible, horrible little face is staring back at me. It's this little round face that I chipped off the gnome's tonsils. It's taken up residence in my throat. It lives behind my tonsils. <laughs> I start to cough and splutter. I have to get it out. Fancy having a little round face living in your throat. I try everything I can think of to get it out, including blowing my nose about a thousand times. But it just will not come out. Okay, and I say, if you will not come out by force, I will get you out with brains. I go down to the kitchen to see what there is to eat. I notice a packet of hundreds and thousands that mum uses to sprinkle on top of cakes. Just the right size, I say to myself. I put three of the hundred thousands on my tongue and put my finger just up to my mouth to see what happens. Sure enough, Little face rolls onto my tongue and eats two of them. It eats the red ones, but it doesn't seem to like the blue ones. Right, I say. I pick out about 15 red hundreds and thousands and put them on my tongue. So they form a little trail and the trail leads out onto my lip 
down my chin and I open my mouth and watch with my finger from a distance. The trail leads on, sorry, the little face rolls out and starts eating. A bit later, he looks around outside and moves down my chin to eat the hundreds and thousands I have put there. As quick as a flash, I shut my mouth. <laughs> uh, leave him trapped outside. I have won. <sighs> or I thought so. The little face tries to burrow back into in through my closed lips, but I have my teeth clenched together so he can't get in. I raise my hand up to grab him, but before I can, he races upwards and disappears up my nose. In about two seconds, I can feel him back into my, in behind my tonsils. <sighs> I know he won't fall for the hundreds and thousands trick again. Just then, there's a knock at the front door. I walk down the hall and I put my finger up to the keyhole to see who it is. It's Tara, my girlfriend. I open the door and give her a weak smile. G'day. I say, how you going? I've come to look at the garden gnome I gave you, she says. I want to make sure that you haven't put it into the backyard. My heart sinks. Tara is standing next to a pile of powder and dust that is the remnants of the gnome. She hasn't seen it yet. <clears throat> come inside and sit down, I say. I'm trying to think of an explanation, but I know that I can't tell Tara. <laughs> She won't like the little she she won't like the little face of my tonsils and she certainly won't like the extra eye. Once she wouldn't go out with me just because I had a pimple on my ear. If I tell her the truth, she'll drop me like a brick. I can feel the little face moving around at the back of my throat. Oh, I have to know where he's up, what he's up to, so I put my finger into my mouth just to see what's going on. What are you sticking your finger for? says Tara. The little face is on the end of the dangly thing at the back of my throat. He's swinging on it, having fun. <laughs> Take your finger out of your mouth and answer me, you silly boy, Tara snaps. The little face is hanging on the dangler by its teeth. It hurts like nothing. <sighs> Stop sucking your finger, you idiot, yells Tara. Now the face is out of sight. He's hiding up the back somewhere. I shove my finger in further to find out what's going on. Mm. This is a big mistake. I touch something that I shouldn't have with my finger and it makes me sick. I spew up all over the carpet. Some of it splashes on Tara's shoes. I get down on my hands and knees and start sifting through the spew. And I hope that little face has been swept up with the tide, but it hasn't. You revolting creep, yells Tara. I'm breaking it off. You're dropped. I never want to see you again in my life. She stamps off and charges out the door. Good riddance, I yell. And take your rotten gnome with you. You will find that it's left on the footpath. I stagger out to the front yard garden and sit down. I actually feel terrible. My life is ruined. My girlfriend's dropped me. I have no money except for two cents. I have an eye on my finger and a little face in my throat. I wish I was dead. I start to cry. Tears falling down my face and down my finger. The eye on my finger is shedding tears too. Little teardrops fall onto the grass. Then something amazing starts to happen. Where the tears from my finger are falling, little concrete gnomes start to grow in the grass. I can't believe it. They're sad little gnomes, but they are very lifelike. They look just like they're alive. Ten little gnomes grow, one for each teardrop. The next day, I sell the gnomes for $10 each. I make $100 profit. Yes. Jill's listening to my story with wide open eyes. I don't suppose she'll believe it. Well, said Jill, what a sad tale. Yeah, I answer. I can hardly believe my ears. Jill believes the whole thing. This is when I notice what a spunk she really is. What I can't understand, she goes on, is what all this has to do with pulling hairs out of your nose. I feel a bit too embarrassed, but I've decided to tell her the truth. I'm trying to grow more gnomes, I say, but I can't make any more tears come. 
when you pull the hairs out of your nose, it makes your eyes water. I hold my finger up to show her my extra eye again. Is that little face still there, she asks. Yeah. Have you got any more hundreds and thousands, she asks. Yeah, I answer again, handing over the packet. Well, she says, we can't have you pulling out hairs out of your nose. It's not a nice habit. Open your light, mouth and let me speak to the face. I open my mouth and Jill looks inside and speaks to my guest. Listen, she says, you don't mind living in there, but fair's fair, you have to pay rent. You help us and we'll help you. So this is how Jill becomes my girlfriend. And we both become very rich from selling garden gnomes. We've got a proper system. I open my mouth and Jill calls out the instructions to my tenant. The little face goes up and pulls on a hair in my nose with his teeth. This makes my eye water. A water drops out, and my, a teardrop jumps out of the ground and more concrete gnomes grow out of the grass. Then we give the face a reward. Red hundreds and thousands. The gnomes are so realistic that we got $500 each for them. This means I don't have to pull any more hairs out so very often. You don't believe the story? Well, all I can say is this. If you're ever thinking about buying a garden gnome and have to look into its mouth first, just to make sure there's no tonsils. If there is, don't buy it. That end.